Listen to the show and peep what these dudes bring If you didn't know it's an orange and blue thing Hope to win the championship in a few rings We're talking baseball It's an orange and blue thing Walk off if the game's tied like shoestrings It's a Mets podcast, orange and blue thing Beat the other team with defense in a few swings LFGM, it's an orange and blue thing Oh my god. I'm already laughing. <laughs> For no reason. No, than- there there is a reason. It's been six months since our last episode, which is quite long considering a podcast is usually like Every once week. a week, mm-hmm. twice a week. When the bet season ends, just like fuck it, see you in April. Bye. Or usually spring training, but right. with this this year and you know the lockout and everything else going on, we didn't start because honestly, Julie and I talked about it and we were like, do we really want to sit here? speculating when a lockout is going to end. I didn't even want to listen to it. I didn't even right. want to read about it, let alone take time out of my day to sit here and talk about it for an hour and force somebody else to listen to it. So, exactly. I so good. I think we were both in the same boat with that. And we're like, well, why are we going to start and just sit here and talk to right. ourselves about bullshit that we don't care about? Honestly, like the, the lockout was, it tainted it a little bit for me because it's not that you don't know that Steve Cohen's a billionaire. You don't know that Max Scherz is a millionaire. Right. Uh, but, you know, when you have to see these guys fighting with each other about the sport and the game that we love so much, mm-hmm. there was a little bit of me that was just like disgusted a little bit. And I didn't want to talk about it because it's right. it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I was keeping track of it, obviously, right. but I didn't have any interest in doing shows about that. So here That's we right. are. The latest we've ever started a season, but this is season six of Orange and Blue Thing. If Let's this is go. your first time watching us for some reason, I don't think that's possible because uh, by this point, you're probably not a new viewer. But if you are, I am Darren. That's Julia. And I noticed that I think that if you are watching and not listening afterwards, I think you need something in the front of your desk. We have to commission yes. someone to like add a quadrino or my, J quad. My dad has Ds. been very passionate about this. He's like, you need a nameplate too. I'm like, well, that that nameplate was from when you did fantasy, fantasy camp, camp, right? Yeah. So MVP. This the, my dad will be very happy to hear this. So thank you. Yeah. So if someone wants to make something for Julia's desk, <laughs> let us know. Uh, and shout out to all you guys in the comments. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and twitter right now and we're seeing some familiar faces in here if you want to give us the fact checkers a shout out to the fact checkers let us know where you're watching from we have uh samuel williams watching on facebook from charlotte north carolina that's pretty awesome so shout out to you down south um also may i make a request everyone in the comments please let us know what you think of darren's glasses (laughs) because i i think it makes him look uh much more superior a lot has changed over the over the last six months (laughs) Not only did I find out at the end of the year last year that I have gray hair, I knew that I had a couple, but I remember on the sides, I just thought it was short, yeah. not that it was gray. I we think had we confirmed. a whole conversation. Yeah. And then since then, I also got glasses. So now I'm like jumping to like the senior citizen uh, era of my life really quickly. So whatever. Um, yeah. Shout out to you guys for checking in. It's been a while. Hopefully we're not too rusty over here. Um, yeah, but it's we're going to get to it. So um, number one. How's the dog walking business? Because everyone probably cares it's, to hear about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if that was sincere or not. No, it is serious. It is sincere. People, can, you know, it is like we are never going to be the X's and O's podcast. Oh, no, this isn't like the Mets podcast. You want to know like what? We don't have any inside information. Well, we do a little bit. Well, actually, a little There's bit There's a today. paper in front. Well, let's not say. I have a, I have a source. <laughs> That gave us some info. Darren has his first source. It's a big day. <laughs> I have multiple sources. I just don't, you know, give up my sources. But on this, uh, we have the breakdown of the Tom Seaver unveiling ceremony. We can't give you all of the information on that mm-hmm. sheet, but we are going to get to that in just a little bit about the timing and what time you should be at the ballpark if you do want to see them unveil the uh, the curtain over the Tom Seaver statue, which has yes. been a long time coming. So seriously, what's been yes. going on? I know like Dogs you've been crazy. pretty crazy though, right? Yeah. You don't have to air your dirty laundry no. about having to let go of anybody, but no. it's been crazy. The past month has been a little chaotic, but um, I am so super thankful. I really do have the best clients in the world. That's what it comes down to is the most awesome people in the world have me walk their dogs. I'm very thankful. Um, we did repeat. We did win best dog walker on Long Island 2022. Right. And this year we also won best pet sitting and boarding. So it's super exciting. Thank you to 
everyone who voted. I know I was very annoying about it online, so no, I very much appreciate it. Absolutely um, not. But yeah, it's kind of wild how, you know, the start of the pandemic was rough for a dog walking business, you know, business that revolves around people leaving the house to go to work and going on vacation. But then everyone got puppies during the pandemic. You now being one of them, we'll get to that. Yeah. And now all of a sudden everyone's back at work and they're like, oh, crap, what do I do with these dogs? So exactly. business is booming. So it's great. Excellent. I just tried to hit the little buttons here over on the. Uh, we just sound check. I wasn't talking about the hot dog. Oh, it did work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just jump right into it yes. with the uh, the ceremony unveiling. Can I see that paper again for of a second? Of course you can. I don't know why I have it. So if you happen to be going to the ballpark next Friday, which is opening day, uh, a lot go- there's a lot going on on opening day. Number Thank one, you. it's it's uh, Jackie Robinson Day. Okay. It is also opening day. It's also tax. It is also tax day, and it is also the unveiling of the Tom Seaver statue, like we said, long time coming. So um, I did find out that the uh, the parking lots should be open by around 915 in the morning, Cool. which I feel like it should be even earlier than that being opening With day. With everything going on. Too. I know some of the like they they promote a certain time, and I think that's like when the the employees get there. Right. But I think if you show up super early, sometimes the fences are just open. I remember there was one opening there. There, there was like a line for us to get in. They oh would not God, let us I in. Remember, remember that? that? That was a mess. Yeah, that was a mess. So that's when we were still in the MTA lot. Yeah. Now we're in the Marina lot. We'll get to that in a little yeah. bit. So the uh, ceremony will begin at 1030 a.m. right in front of the ballpark there. So if you get there early, let's say you want to park and head on over. I'm not I'm sure it's going to be a kind of like a zoo because yeah. you've seen there's a kind of limited amount of space between the statue is just to the right of the home and apple mm-hmm. and then where you get off the train. So I'm assuming like the first X amount of area will be like seating for like the Seaver family right. or any guests that might be invited. So as far as the fans are concerned, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. Yeah. Uh, if you get there early though, I'm sure like if you're great, you know, that guy, Greg pack that gets a uh, first in line to everything. Yeah. If he, he's probably there already. Um, <laughs> but if you get there super early, you might be able to get a good view of it. Uh, honestly, I've been waiting a long time for this to come and I feel like it is a long time coming, but the statue will be there on April 16th as well. So for me, I'm not trying to downplay it or convince anyone else otherwise, Uh but since I think there's so much going on on that day, so many moving parts, I'm probably going to just go to the lot yeah. and tailgate and hang out. I and mean, then I'll see the statue the next right. day. And I think the ceremony is really for his family, friends, teammates, whoever else is there um, and making sure that they're able to experience the whole thing. Um, for me, like I want to be able to get up close to it and see it, which you won't really be able to do that day. So I agree. I'll probably go see it after the fact. Um, and also having said that, you know, if you're planning on going right into the stadium when the gates open that day, I know it's a little probably before uh the gates open a little bit but i would recommend not going to the front of the stadium to do that it's gonna be a <laughs> zoo go straight to the side so yeah it's gonna be wild so uh in years past you may have noticed also that they had that clear line yes they're not doing clear anymore oh so clears out and this new facial recognition oh, system yeah. is in what do you think about that? I, Some people were freaked out about it. Here's the thing. I, at the end of the day, like your iPhone, you're being facially recognized everywhere you go. Like, it's not like this is new. It's just the first time someone's telling you that it's happening, but whatever. I think it's a little, I don't know. I just feel like it's, I know, I didn't they say like, it's how you're going to get into the clubs when you're in the stadium now. You don't need a ticket. Well, yeah. You know how, when you walk into the ballpark and I don't know what it's called now, but like the Piazza 31 club, right. whatever it is. Uh, normally when you're walking through the ballpark, you have to show your ticket more than once. So okay. you, you show your ticket first to get in the ballpark, obviously, but right. then certain clubs, you show it again. Okay. So now it's just like you walk around and that's how you're going to get in. My only fear with this is that it is very humbling when your facial recognition does not recognize you. <laughs> like I know for me just to get facial recognition to work on my phone, like there's two, I had to do it two times. Cause the first time I did it, I didn't have makeup on. Then when I wore makeup, no way. it didn't recognize me and I had to redo it so it could recognize like a second face. No way. Yeah. And also just from experience, like I, I go to Mets games, like who I was. You're being watched everywhere you go. No, no, no but, not only so that, I, but I'm just I'm saying like about, at this point, who cares? I, I don't care about that. I'm talking about like it not being able to recognize my face and not letting me in because it doesn't recognize me as the that person. That is very strange. Because I know the person I was when I walked into the stadium, David Wright's last game looked very different than the person <laughs> who walked out. And like, it's possible to have a wild emotional or just you could go in. I wonder how it works with someone like other. that sets their phone up initially and then like they lose or gain weight or something happens. Like, yeah. I, the, it was really humbling when my, my iPhone opens, was like, we don't know her. <laughs> my phone opens when I'm wearing like sunglasses and stuff. Yeah. Like, Even when like it doesn't see your eyes at all. Like not, I not regular glasses. Need a like, lot of health, I guess. It's weird. I don't know. Very so then, anyway, that's the story, but I don't know how much, you know, you don't like, that's another thing. 
the people who are like really dead set against this yeah. I, when I posted about it on that, I don't get. Well, whatever. Just don't sign up for it. Right. You don't have to do that. Yeah. You could still use the other traditional way. But this is a way that I think that you could set up through your ballpark app. I Don't quote me on that. I can't remember how the actual setup is going to be. But I went to the what's new event last week at City Field, chopped it up with with uh, Mrs. Cohen a little bit. No big deal. <laughs> um, but that's not his source, by the way. No, that's not my it source. <laughs> so the. Um, yeah, the uh, the system, I think, is if you want to opt in for it just to make it easier and quicker to get into the ballpark. Otherwise, use use like right. the old school route and just show right. your your barcode. Well, that's not even old school. You can't do stubs anymore. I know. I've learned that the hard way. Oh, my God. <laughs> the amount of times that Julia has hit me up, I feel like she's 90 years old. She's like, I don't have a ticket. I'm like, just check your ballpark. No, app. I didn't say I didn't have a ticket. I was just clarifying if I did or not. I listen, to be fair, I haven't had a season ticket in a few years. And the last time I did, we got the boxes with the paper tickets and whatever. And it's a little different now. So I was just clarifying. <laughs> uh, and, and one thing else I wanted to give a special shout out for is how early Julia showed up today. I wrote it down on my notes here because this has never happened in the history of our, our relationship of orange and blue thing. 23 minutes early today. Uh, props to you on that, Thank which I almost don't like because <laughs> as we're sitting here talking, know, I'm like, shit, like, we need to shut up. We could just save this for the show because yeah. Like I said, the show is not X's and O's. It's about us just bullshitting about Mets stuff right. because that's what this is. So anyway, 23 minutes early. Congrats to you. Thank you very much. So um, something if you've been watching along a little bit on the internet over the past, actually, before I jump ahead, if you are watching live, shout out again to the amazing Mets Foundation. I just did mention Alex Cohen uh, seeing her last week was excellent over at City Field during the What's New event. I don't know if this is new, but now at least now going forward, I don't know if it was in the past as well, but anything sold at the uh, Amazing Memorabilia Shop, mm -hmm. the proceeds will go towards the Amazing Mets Foundation. Oh, amazing. So Alex Cohen, I, the, the story I heard was the Amazing Me Memorabilia Shop, uh, shout out if you're a fan that buys, like like uh, Keith Blacknick, for instance, uh -huh. who buys like game used stuff and Rach and bought Jesse Lucas Berg. Dude's pants a few, few oh, years yeah, back, yeah. a decade Lucas ago. Dude's like yeah. who's buying Lucas Dude's pants? <laughs> Rach, shout out to Rach. <laughs> Love it. Um, so uh, they also have this cool grab bag thing where I think it's 40 bucks where you could spend $40 and then you get to pick anything out of a box okay. and it is worth at least $40. Cool. So I don't know if they've been doing that forever or if that's a new thing. But either way, uh, Alex Cohen saw that the the amazing memorabilia stand was first like a folding table mm -hmm. and then it became like a little kiosk with rolling racks. And no one really knew about it. I feel you'd like walk up, you kind of you'd miss it. Yeah. You, you walk up the the S well, you don't walk up. You ride up the escalator from the Jackie Robinson Rotunda. You can walk up on the stairs on the right or the We're left. Losing but the plot. <laughs> if you go up the uh escalator uh -huh. and then walk towards your right towards first base, that is where the new amazing memorabilia shop is, and you yes. can't miss it. Like on the right when you're walking is their team store. Okay. And on the left, directly across is the amazing memorabilia shop. So Got it. now they have a full blown shop and it's awesome and um pretty cool that all the proceeds are going to oh wow oh, oh what oh. is that noise i don't know but uh Break, my source just texted news. me breaking news <laughs> um sorry i'll check that in a second okay. i don't want to leak anything here on the show but, i was literally uh, just thinking like are we sure people can hear us we don't have anyone here like checking no, i'm, I'm checking okay i'm checking over here so it's it, we're usually good for for a few technical difficulties to start the no, season why so. did you have to jinx it did we no, oh. everything's going cool, but why'd you have to jinx it? I knocked on wood. I don't right. know why this thing's making all these noises. <laughs> okay, Hopefully you guys aren't hearing that. That's our technical difficulty. That's it. Uh, remind me. It says remind me in four minutes. I'm going <laughs> to hit remind me like never for this button to go off again. Uh, postpone. Okay, cool. So anyway, the reason why I brought up the amazing uh, memorabilia shop yes. is that I got two of these game used baseballs from uh, their stand last week when I was at the ballpark. And now we are giving them away to two lucky viewers. So if you're watching on Facebook. Or if you're watching on Twitter, all you have to do post it on your is wall. post on your wall if you're watching on Facebook and retweet it if you're watching on Twitter. And then next week, we will go through all the people that all the people that shared it mm -hmm. and select one of you on each of those platforms to give these away for free. Again, it's worth at least 40 bucks. I didn't check the hologram. It's probably worth more than that. So free gift for you from us through the Mets, awesome. uh, Amazing Mets Foundation. And just like we've done in the past, we are going to be getting a lot of the promo items from the Mets. So next Saturday, if you're going to the ballpark, they are giving away a replica of the Tom Seaver statue. So cool. So since they haven't showed anyone what the statue looks like yet. We haven't seen it. I mean, I think we've seen it. Have you seen it? 
Oh yeah. Well, I saw. I saw. You see the. Did you see it? it like driving. Down oh my god. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> so since they're since it hasn't officially been seen yet, right. they are uh, not showing off what the statue is going to look like yet. Mm -hmm. But the uh, we will have a few of those statues to give away on the show. Cool. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Love and it. also on Friday opening day, they are giving away the Jackie Robinson T-shirt. Oh, awesome! So it is a white T-shirt brooklyn 42 yeah, nice on it having opening day on a friday it is it's but it's, it's never been i don't think it's ever been a friday no but there's so much going on next friday i uh don't envy anyone working at the ballpark because they have so much different stuff going for on for sure so um back towards uh i was going to talk about smi for a second so if you didn't see this yet from today it's amazing um it is a minute long and i'm sure you could deal with this one minute if you're listening afterwards it's worth just, it if you're listening as a podcast and you might get confused because it's just audio, but just envision this being awesome. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to need my booth team by my side. Booth team, assemble! Booth team, assemble! Hey, Keith. What's up? Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. We've been here literally the entire time you have. Look, I just got the call from SNY. They want us back, but I can't do it without my booth team. I don't know, Keith. That was a year ago. We're different people now. Last season was such a roller coaster. I don't know if I can go through that again. I mean, think about what you're asking, man. What the hell are you asking, man? Gentlemen, <laughs> the new season is here. Will you follow me again? I'm getting too old for this. To the booth! To the booth! To the booth! Okay! <laughs> All right. So, Julia's cracking up, even though she's seen this already. Like, No, Gelbs gets me every time. Yeah. He's so good. But the underrated part of that, uh -huh. a little hidden gem they throw in is like when they say to the booth, Gary throws his pen down like he does when he's excited after like a walk-off or something. Right. And then the pen lands in his water cup. No way. It's Plus, very, a go back and rewatch it. Not it now. Really I don't know. At a later date. Rewatch it. Yeah, rewatch it. Uh, really but fun. yeah, honestly, that's that was incredible. And I, I retweeted it. Some guy I have to point out here because, you know, he did own up to it afterwards. He wrote a ah, damn. Where's the tweet? He wrote something like there's two minutes of my life. I'll never get back during my lunch break. And I wrote back. So you watched it twice. <laughs> it's a minute long. <laughs> People are so dumb. No, but then he did write like, yeah, I watched it twice. So wait a minute. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the Howard Stern movie private parts, but it was something like, um, how long does the average listen the average uh listener of the show uh -huh. let's say it's an hour right? right and they said what's the average listener of people who hate the show and they said two and a half hours <laughs> so it's weird like uh carton and, and uh roberts carton talks about this all the time like um you know people who hate the show his show seem to listen more yeah they can't stop so they can go on twitter and like hate on and it. know what they're hating on right it's yeah. weird so this guy so he did strange. own up to he's like yeah you actually you know you got me also some people didn't put this together that's a scene from anchorman uh, if you didn't put that together you, that's right what so that if is. you don't and like that's that a genius. if you don't like it you have either not seen anchorman yes. have no personality <laughs> or <laughs> or both <laughs> or both oh my god I got to bring this up. Okay. Shit. And I don't, I thought about it and I was like, I don't want to hate on this guy because he seemed to be very proud of this on the internet, but your theory, your ongoing theory about like photo, like men and photos is going. with dogs. I know where this is going. Have you seen the photo? Yeah. I th I you know what I'm talking about? I think I know what you're talking about. All right. So I, I, I don't know this guy. I, I don't remember who it is, but he wrote something online. Like <sighs> it's the person. I, someone keep calling me. <laughs> uh, like something about like I'm newly single and something. And he posted a photo of his dog and it was like met stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, Julia would like totally yeah. have a field. Day I, I, it could be another person. I know somebody tagged us or tagged me in it and was like, did oh, you guys talk about this on Orange and Blue thing? It might have been. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to put anybody on blast because this person could be very <laughs> lovely. I am not knocking. I don't even know them. So it's fine. Um, but it's yeah, fine. <laughs> it's fine. I do have a theory that. It, or it's it's just my own personal thing. If you are a guy and you're advertising yourself in any sort of dating capacity and the first picture or any pictures is just like of your dog or you with your dog, 
my my thing and what I have found to be true from talking to people is just that like you are relying on your dog's cuteness and your dog's personality <laughs> to compensate for your lack of and hoping that that like you should want a girl which to is like not you, what we're not saying not about dog. this guy no I don't know but this I guy. saw this and I was yeah. like Juliet I have a field day with this yeah but I, I chose to remain silent and I'm sure that person is lovely and I'm not knocking them at all yeah um but yes that is that's that's the tea so back to the booth uh if you didn't see the news Howie Rose is taking a little bit of a step back this coming season from the long road trips. So anything pretty much me central or west, I don't know if he's just sticking to the east, but he's not going to be going to like Cali and yeah. like Colorado and stuff like that. So um, after his you know health concerns last year and and the things that you know his doctor was saying that you know he should be following and he should be doing, he's going to tone it back a little bit. And the Mets announced yesterday, kind of you know surprisingly that they're bringing in a rookie. So Jake Eisenberg is uh I didn't even see this. Yeah, you didn't see this? No, I didn't this is see all this. news to you? Wow. So Jake Eisenberg who has been the play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Storm Chasers, a AAA for the Royals. All right. is now going straight to the Bigs and working for WR. No, is it is it WR 880? Sure. It's not WR. I don't know. For 880. So he's going to be in the booth and uh, taking over. Not really taking over, but filling, filling in, in for Howie Rose. Big shoes to fill. Which is which is great. Awesome. So I instantly noticed that Jake was already following us. So we obviously had to follow back. So cool. congrats to Jake. And if you also didn't hear the news, Eddie Coleman is taking a step back as well. So Eddie Coleman is retiring, yeah. uh, who's been with the Mets forever. Mm -hmm. He's an original from, I think it was 1987 when the fans started. So he's been doing this a very long time. And I've been listening to the Odyssey app when I go to the gym. I just put, put on the fan and mm -hmm. I listen. And I was there on Sunday and Kim Jones had Eddie on for, I think, like a full hour. Wow. And what they did was they had callers from over the years call in and, you know, just bid their farewell kind of thing. It almost felt like a, like a, a living funeral <laughs> in some cases because, like, Kim Jones was, like, barely, like, borderline tears the whole Aww. time. You could tell. You could hear it in her voice. Yeah. You know? But one of the callers, or maybe it was Kim, my ears have started making I weird noises. That, I, that too. Uh, I think Cam or one of the callers brought up, you know, who was like the low key, your low key, like favorite Mets player to cover, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not like a superstar, whatever. And I'm pretty sure he said his first one was uh, Glennon Rush. OK. And the second one, I think, was um, shit. Who was the second one? I don't remember. But then he went down the list. And he's like, obviously, David Wright, whatever. But right. he, he mentioned like. Uh, right off the bat was Glennon Rush, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So Eddie C, all the best to him. Yeah, I uh, shared an elevator, uh, not not a, a a train with Eddie C once. Interesting. Him and Madge. Did I ever tell you the story about I got that? Ho I think I did the hotel room from uh, um, John Roush. Oh yes, yes. So that I when heard. I got the the room from Roush and I was staying at the Players Hotel, I took a one of like the, the T or whatever they call it in DC to get back to the hotel, mm -hmm. and Eddie Coleman and Madge Kowski, the immortal was on the train and they're like what what are you why are you on this like why are you getting <laughs> off at the same spot as us why are you walking to the hotel why with are us? You here i was like i'm just staying here i'm like uh i'm the player for the night <laughs> anyway so that's the story with that so uh all the best to eddie all the yeah. best to howie i will miss people mistaking him for sandy alderson at the ballpark that was <laughs> yeah. always fun sandy had never met a uh, sweater vested in love <laughs> so um back to keith Hernandez for a second if you guys are Perfect. following along we are going to be out there uh, coincidentally, the day that they retire Keith Hernandez's number, I think that's July 9th. I think one of those days, I think it's the first Saturday in July. Someone keeps calling me from no color ID. If you're watching the Could show, it be the, just text me the delivery thing. Oh my God. Do you want to take that? Go check the back door for me. Okay. No, we would have heard the bell. Are you sure? Yeah, it's not. Okay. Yeah, it can't be. I am, you talk for a second. <laughs> We got shipping issues here. So um, I think we're Darren's no, going. I, hung up. I answer the phone. They hang up on me. <laughs> Yeah, we actually we've been waiting for a box for like a week yeah. and it's not here for some reason. If and they I, call back, you can answer. I keep checking the tracking and it's like not updating. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that. So anyway, we will be out there on the retirement day. And I had the idea to buy everyone in our section a fake mustache, yes. which doesn't cost a lot. It's a few cents, whatever. I was going to buy a thousand of them and hand them out at the tailgate party. So I did kind of do like a re like a reverse psychology type thing on the Mets. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well. I'll buy everyone in the ballpark a mustache if we could do it. Right. And it'll be a sponsored promo, the seven line, whatever. They already have something else planned for that day. Okay. So I don't think this is bad for me to talk about. Okay. Um, so uh, I reached out to the Mets and I was like, can we do this? And they said, yes, actually. Oh, cool. 
cool. So, but we're not doing it. Okay. So, <laughs> not cool. So lame. So something else was happening on not on their part. It's my fault. Uh-huh. Um, something else was happening on the day of, as far as giveaways are concerned, and a lot's going on that day. So they had promoted it or asked me if they'd want to do it the night before okay. to kick off like Keith weekend mm-hmm. type thing. And then I got the quote of how much this was going to cost. And it was like so far out of our budget on this because I, I understand there's like packaging involved and right. we had to order like four. They wanted to be a, a, a Bull, ballpark yeah. giveaway. So like 44,000 of these things. And the, the price was way too much for me to, especially like I had to pull the trigger when it was still the lockout and I right. wasn't sure when the season was going to start. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't think this is a great idea for us. So I actually said no. So it's not the Mets fault. That's not happening. They did say yes to it. It just okay. didn't work out. So, so you could bring your own. I'm still doing the mustaches. I still am going to pay for them on the the retirement day, okay, which cool. is the next day. I'll give them out in the ball in the at the tailgate party or something like that. Love it. So, uh, that's the story on that. So I know that I was kind of trying to do like a reverse. I I wrote like a blog post about it. I was like, hey, let, Mets, let's do it. Like thinking that like if I wrote about it first, they'd have to they'd have to say yes, yeah. and they did say yes. <laughs> and then I ended up dropping the ball because honestly, the the price that came back. What I felt like it was so much higher than I could just package them myself. And I was like, this just doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. Right, to make it all official. So I was like, forget it. It's just not worth it. So um, that's the story with that. So um, we ran a promotion over the weekend, and I'm going to pull that winner now. Um, I have to pull up Google here for a second because this is how I do it. (laughs) I type in... Random number generator. And look how smart he looks doing it with the glasses. I know. I look so smart. (laughs) So the way that this works is I told anyone if they shopped on Friday through Sunday night at 1159 PM, we're going to pick the winner right now. Um, I was giving away a Jacob deGrom jersey. We all know what's going on with Jacob deGrom right now. That doesn't mean you don't want a Jacob deGrom jersey. You're basically getting a $300 plus gift for free. Right. So all you had to do to be eligible was go to the sevenline.com and buy anything. It could have been a sticker, which was you know a few dollars, mm-hmm. or you want to buy a t-shirt, whatever it is. Just get in the system. And uh, a couple hundred orders came in. I think like almost 300 orders came in. So the way that we do this, so you know it's not Fugazi, <laughs> we type in the first number, two, three, seven... Uh, nine three three. I know this is great radio. <laughs> and then the second number, two three eight one nine seven one nine seven. And then I'm going to share this screen so you guys can see nothing funky wow, going on here. Accountability uh, to stream. Hit this button that says generate. So order number two three eight one two three, like which I can look up very quickly. <laughs> and then I will email you right after if you're not watching live. Uh, you will get either a Jacob deGrom jersey or any other jersey that you choose for free. So let's, yeah, why not? (laughs) So let's say you don't want a deGrom jersey or you already have one and you want to order whatever. We'll get your size, get the name, get the number. If you want to do a custom, you could probably do that too. As long as it's nothing, uh, profane, profane. So David Katz is the winner. David cats in inglewood new jersey so shout out to david Katz. i will contact you and he bought a toddler t-shirt so Aww. hopefully he's got a little mets fan in training down there in uh new jersey love it so shout out to you oh damn i should have done a drum roll i was literally i was thinking i was like if you had like a third hand hit that hit that applause button but if anyone wants to give uh, okay. a shout out to david in the comments or if you know david shoot him a text tag david and let him know what's going on so Thursday, 48 hours from actually, uh, well, 48 and a half hours from right now is supposed to yes. be opening day. Weather's not looking too great. I'm going. What's your plan? Really? I'm going. Because me no, and my, No matter what? Yeah. So me and my dad. Let me check the as weather. As you know, and if anybody who watches this knows, me and my dad are very dedicated to our streak of going to every single opening day. Last year was 10 years in a row. We managed to get cardboard cutouts during the lockout. We wore masks last year. We did it. Now, since the lockout changed the day of opening day, my dad is not going to be in New York on April 15th and he won't be able to make City Field opening day. So I was very distraught and I was like, okay, well, what if I could get off work on Thursday the 9th and we just went to DC for the actual opening day? He's like, I'm in. I'm like, okay. So we bought tickets. We're all excited. We're like, oh, I'm going to see DeGrom, go down to DC, have a nice father daughter day, going to be wonderful. And then DeGrom got hurt. We're like, Okay, well, there's Scherzer. That's great. Yeah. And like, and Scherzer got hurt. And now they're saying, you know, Scherzer's fine, but he's going to pitch on Friday. We're like, okay. And now it's like, oh, it's also going to rain and the game may get canceled. We're like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so, so I don't want to, I don't want to rain on your opening day parade here. Go for it. But uh, 
tomorrow, which is the 6th, mm. it is a 40% chance of rain, showers in the morning, then cloudy. Thursday, showers and thunderstorms in the morning, giving way to periods of light rain in the afternoon, which is pretty promising because okay. I think it's a 4 o'clock start. 4 o'clock, yep. Chance of rain, 90%. So we'll see. Then Friday, it says showers early becoming less numerous in the day. I think Friday is a night game. If I'm not mistaken, maybe so. Yeah, probably. Right. Yes. Chance of rain 50% on Friday. Who knows? Maybe they'll get it in. Maybe they won't. So either way you're going down. Are you staying over? No, my, dad, my dad has a meeting at 10 a.m. the next morning. So oh my God. Gonna, so I don't know. We're still kind of like deciding, but I'll be distraught. I think you should really <laughs> keep an know. eye on the Doppler because to sit like 10 hours in the car I and know. then get down there and then they, they might not play. I know. Holy shit. I know. Because sometimes like they don't call. Haven't you? Weren't you in a game when like you were in the stadium and then they called it? Yes, last year it eating was at nachos DeGrom's or something. Star. Yes, I was eating my Shake Shack. It was just downpouring. We walked in. I got Shake Shack. I was sitting there eating. They were like, "The game is canceled. Go home." I ate it and went home. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, but DC. that's when you live like forty-five minutes away, <laughs> right. not five hours. Yeah, so that's insane. We have some things to discuss. Yeah, but. um, I'm supposed to be going to Barstool on Thursday. They're doing they're doing their own little gala. Yes. Like their opening day gala. Okay. So I should be watching from there, you know, depending on if they play or not. Whatever happened with well, I guess it's been hard since the pandemic. The Cohen gala? Yeah, the they Cohen gala. They never had it. They never had it. I guess it was hard this year because of the lockout. He couldn't really be planning a gala when it's, you know, an owner's versus player kind of thing. Yeah. But, but if it happens maybe next year. I'd like to go. Yeah. Or get invited. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe you can come too. We'll see. Sweet. <laughs> so um yeah, as we know, I mean, we kind of just glanced over it because honestly, not that we're uh, avoiding the inevitable here, trying to just lie to ourselves. But Jacob Degrom is not being not going to play anytime soon. And I honestly, I was thinking about this on the drive in today. If Jacob Degrom is never back to whatever Jacob Degrom was, mm -hmm. do you still think that? he'll go down as like one of the best Mets pitchers in history. Like, is he a hall of fame, fame player? Um, okay. Hall of fame. I'm not sure because a lot how of many people, Cy Youngs do you need to be a hall of fame? I don't know, but a lot of people are stingy on how long you're elite for and how long you're good for and how long you play. So I don't know about that, but I definitely think he'll go down as one of the best Mets pitchers. I mean, last year, no one will ever be Tom Seaver, but he was encroaching on that territory the first half of the season. I think, you know, if it's all, I don't want to say all over, but if he doesn't get back there now, obviously it's not even close. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to talk about it. It's really sad, but it's something you have to consider. He is an older pitcher who's doing something that is not sustainable. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about people telling or not telling him, but saying like he just needs to throw not as hard and he would still be elite and just might be able to stay healthy. And who are any of well, us to tell Jacob DeGrom what to do? But I was like, saying that like all year yeah, last year. I know. Especially after like his first opening day start last year. I think we had a show and I'm like, well, I don't need this guy throwing 104 yeah. uh, his first day out of the gate. Yeah, he was you know? like 99 in spring training after it. he hasn't played. I didn't even realize how long he was out for last year, but like he was out since like what, like June, July, like. It was a no, long time. Before, more less than that. I mean, more than that. I think yeah. he only pitched like the first month and then no. like they sat him down. He came back. He kept having those MRIs. Yes, it was back and forth, but he did come back, but he hasn't played in a game. I remember I saw him at a May game or in June. June. Yeah. June. Yeah. But that's crazy. It's been that long. And he's probably, he's probably going to go a full year without pitching in a big league game. That's nuts. Yeah. But, <laughs> but having said that, we were talking about something Lindor said the other day, which I found very interesting and also very true. Was oh, yeah, let me pull that up. Yeah. Was that Puma put that up? I believe so. Yeah. Somebody asked Lindor, you know, about the whole DeGrom injury and how does this affect you guys and all that or whatever. And what he said was very true, which was just like, listen, like Jacob DeGrom was elite and Jacob DeGrom for a lot of games last year. And we still lost them because we didn't score. So nothing really matters if we're not scoring runs. So we're just focused on scoring runs. Like the offense is focused on the offense. Obviously, we want him here. Obviously, we're a better team with him there. But like, it doesn't matter how good Jacob DeGrom is if the offense, the offense can't hit. Yeah. Um, which is kind of what I was preaching all last year. And I completely agree. So, uh, yes, it sucks that DeGrom is hurt. But again, if anything was proven the last four years, the Mets can't win with just Jacob DeGrom being elite. You need everybody else to be playing well, too. So, yeah. So I don't know if you saw this, but not to be the bearer of bad news for for more stuff here. Um, Tywon Walker. Um, did you hear about this? I heard he had so he bad has some knee, some knee soreness today. So not only is 
Scherzer dealing with a little hammy tightness. Uh, uh, DeGrom has the scapula issue, which I've never heard um, stress. I know what a stress fracture is. A stress, a stress reaction, reaction is what I had upon reading the news. I did not know it was a medical diagnosis. For, we talked about this last year or whatever it was when you first started. Where we're like, we're getting uh, like a front row seat <laughs> in like uh, a, a medical classroom. The yeah. amount of stuff you learn by being a Mets fan is insane. Yep. So now Taiwan Walker departed today's game with what he termed as knee soreness. Okay, I know what that is. Uh, knee soreness. Yeah, we yes. know about that. Um <laughs> It's the last week uh, attempts to build up his lower half still in pe anticipates pitching Monday in Philly. So we'll see about that. But, you know, it's, you know, who's laughing right now. Uh, you wouldn't see it because he blocked you. Oh, Stroman. <laughs> yeah. So Marcus Stroman blocked me. We'll jump right into that, um, which I didn't. I, I know that a he blocks like everybody. Right. But the reason behind uh, him blocking me, the only thing I could think of was a tweet here that I'm about to pull up because, and it wasn't even anything bad. Yeah. Um, let me, let me t pull this up. <laughs> so I don't know who blocks more people, if it's uh, Stroman or Martino, <laughs> but I think that both of them combined probably have the entire, uh, um, like all of Mets Twitter. Yeah. All of the Twitter is yeah. basically, uh, blocked. So I don't know how it came up, but I think that he tweeted something and, and people were clowning on it. And then, um, I went to look at what it said and uh -huh. it was blocked or I was blocked crazy. Um, so I think this is what the tweet is, which I don't even think is bad. So you literally the first line is I love, or I like I Marcus. Like Marcus Stroman. So February 23rd, I wrote, I like Marcus Stroman and believe deep down he means well, that, that being said, said, there's only so many times you can point your finger before looking in the mirror, take a breath, look around, enjoy your family and riches keep grinding for your craft which i feel like is not a bad thing at all no i mean that, i also you... didn't at him so right. i know he that he searches, searches he his does. name i i can't think of anyone who has done such a 180 from going to such a beloved like i loved rooting for him i loved having him on my team to just insufferable and like i don't and again we also have to keep in mind we don't know what happens in the clubhouse behind closed doors with the front office whatever it very much sounds like he has some sort of beef with the organization in general from his tweets and what he's talking about and i whatever so i i don't i, I can't make excuses but for can you imagine he's that? just been out of pocket this off that tweet was so pg i know, I, like, know. I like basically i'm like i like this dude he's got to just like worry about himself yeah. and stop worrying about like for someone who who preaches so much like positivity, positivity nothing and, bothers like, me and like being so like confident in your own abilities right. and you know whatever it seems like that might just be something he writes to cover up that he really that's all this stuff does bother there, There's him. a lot of people I follow on Twitter, like particularly like, you know, like young guys or girls who are trying to figure their lives out, who I feel like always just tweet things because they want themselves to believe it. Kind of like a, like fake it till you make it right, write down your dreams and they'll come true kind of thing. And I feel like that's Marcus Stroman sometimes just like he writes what he wants to be true. And listen, hats off to him. Got a nice contract. He's out of New York. He is. He seems to be happy. But did you also see he did an interview with somebody? I forget who it was. Nightingale. Yeah. Or what was it? Bob and Nightingale. He was asking about like, oh, you know, the Giants, and you spoke with the Giants, and how did that go? And he flat out said he hasn't even pitched for the Cubs yet. He was like, oh, I would love to be a member of the Giants organization <laughs> yeah. one day. I'm like, okay, like that can be true, but like there's a way to say that that isn't disrespectful to your own team and fan base and whatever. I don't know. Um, I wish him well. So do I. And but I, I, I even with all of these injuries, I am kind of glad we don't have to go through another season of just the drama for no reason. I liked him so. on the team. I would have wanted. I, I would have been okay with him being back. Yes. Uh, I think that the internet is not for everybody. Agreed. And it's unfortunate that when I was being like complimentary of him, yeah, just saying like, "Yo, uh, just ignore this bullshit." That I ended up getting blocked. I, I don't care. Like, I, I just think he refuses to accept any sort of criticism from people on Twitter, which again is your What's right. Even criticism? I, it's, I, it, but it's constructive criticism. Right. It's just like it's telling him what to do, and I just don't think he wants to hear that from Twitter. Uh, having said that, if you don't want to be told what to do, don't make a Twitter account because <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is where the internet goes to tell other people how to live their lives. It's not the platform for you. Um, I don't know. Wish him well, but.
So whatever. Uh, if you have a Marcus Stroman t-shirt or a jersey that you might want to find something to do with, oh, this yeah. would be a great time to hit up our friends from Project Repat back again for another season with Orange and Blue Things. So we have a special promo code uh, for you guys just by being viewers and listeners of Orange and Blue Thing. It is 7LINE22, the number 7, L-I-N-E, 22. That gives you 30% off Love of it. a t-shirt quilt. A whole code this year. Awesome deal. Uh, insane. 30% off. So go to projectrepat.com. If you don't know about them yet, you should because they give you a great uh, way to recycle your old t-shirt. So Marcus Stroman, <laughs> for instance, Noah Syndergaard, for instance, <laughs> Michael Conforto, for instance, well, anyone else. Maybe keep that one on ice. Never know. They already gave away his number. He's not coming <laughs> back. So whatever you may be, maybe you gained weight, lost weight. You want to do something with your old stuff. Maybe you got a hole in the bottom and you don't know what to do with it. They cut your old T-shirts into squares and turn it into a custom T-shirt quilt. Over 500,000 happy customers since 2012. A great idea. They've been uh, they've been uh, seen on L Today, CNN, Fast Company, just to name a few. And how it works is you choose your size. They got the lap size, the twin, the full, the large throw, the queen. And you ship them your shirts. They cut it into squares and they turn it into a t-shirt quilt. So such a great idea. We love it. And we recommend that you hit them up because I don't know for sure, but this might be a far-fetched thing to say. I think we might produce more Mets t-shirts than anyone else over a year, especially like when we do our outings and yeah. we send like a thousand t-shirts out. Sure. So a lot of you guys out there have shirts that uh, maybe you've only worn a couple times or whatever you want to do with them, turn it into a t-shirt quilt and uh, hook yourself up with something special. So project repat 30% off code is seven line 22. That is the number seven L I N E 22 project repat.com. Oh my gosh. Wait, while we're on the subject, can I make a plea really quickly uh, sure. for my own quilt? Cause I have been trying to make, you've this... been talking about this since last year. Literally. I've been trying, oh, this is what you're what yes. are you waiting for. For I need, I'm going to ask if anyone okay, has it. Okay. I have been trying to make a 2015 team t-shirt quilt forever. I need one more shirt to like have enough to make the quilts I want. And I really, I need something Wilmer Flores. Cause he is like such a central part of that team. So this is my plea. I tried to buy one on eBay. I did. And then they had sold it already. If anybody has a Wilmer Flores shirt of any kind that they are willing to part ways with, <laughs> doesn't I matter willing, what size it doesn't is. matter what size, doesn't matter what condition I'm willing to pay for it, but, um, find a way to contact me, slide into my DMS. I don't, don't be weird, but just, I don't care. I need your shirt. <laughs> so, Speaking of weird, yeah. did you see Twitter, uh, Tinder swindler. I didn't see it, but I've heard all about it. I w started watching it last night Wild and stuff. number one, the girls on this so far are just, uh, I hate to put down women. <laughs> These girls are so stupid. <laughs> this girl meets a guy. I've never been on Tinder. I don't know much about it yeah. besides watching friends swipe through it. Right. She meets this guy on Tinder. Mm -hmm. She looks him up. She's like, Oh, I'm going to Google him. It ends up being that like, he's the son of some, um, diamond owning company billionaire right. whatever right she goes to lunch with him to have coffee that day she decides she's gonna go on a private jet with him uh on vacation with his ex-wife and daughter on the same private jet and they fly to like morocco or someplace crazy and her friends and she put up her text afterwards she's like yeah my friends didn't really think this was a safe idea but i did it anyway she wrote yolo in the text <laughs> i have to respect it but i like you meet a guy and then you're going on a no. private chat with him the same day. Two things. On vacation. One, same day as well. Did you ever, you follow Tim Healy, I, I assume I on do. Twitter. Do you, it was, was a he one the one that guy. got into a fight with uh, Vargas? Well, Vargas had some but that was them? with him. Okay. Yes. All he said, he said like, have, see you tomorrow, Mickey. And it right, set right, him right, off. Right, right. But, um, but Tim Healy's old roommate was this wonderful woman from Lithuania. And she had like met some rich guy. Like, I don't know where she met him, but it was kind of a similar thing. Like literally a helicopter picked her up. He could watch it from her window. This helicopter just picked her up and she was gone for like days. And he was just like, you good? She was like, yeah. And she came home and like literally came home. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm over it. And just like stopped seeing the guy. But yeah, it, it's, <laughs> like, it's like, a, it's not a series. It's like a one, like it's a two hour documentary. We got like 30 minutes into it. And I was like rolling my eyes the entire time. We'll probably finish it, but it was. I was watching it and just kept saying to myself, these women are so stupid. Yeah. But whatever. People uh, are stupid. Yeah, I, I guess so. And most of them are on Tinder. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it, but that's that's the story there. So um, I am going to talk a little bit about our boat party that we had the other night. Yes, I'm sad I you missed, missed it. I know. If I was you jet happened, lagged. 
<laughs> yeah, jet lagged from your Cali Cali uh, vacation yes. for a couple weeks out there. But we had so much fun. Shout out to the Skyline Princess and everyone over there that uh, helped make this uh, make this event happen. Initially, when we thought that the the season wasn't going to start on time, which it didn't, but um, opening day was supposed to be what yesterday? No, the first. So we planned this for wait. It's going to be the thirty first. The thirty first. Yeah. We planned this for the first. Yes. And it was great. So the boat holds like 400 people. And I think we had like 300 on there. So it didn't sell out, which I'm actually glad it didn't. Because right. when we got on, I was like, this is the perfect amount of people. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine there being an extra 100 people on there. So if we do this again, which I think we are, that's why I asked you when Katie's wedding yeah. was again, <laughs> uh, which I should have it like tattooed on my arm now. So I could just remember July it. 16th, July 16th. <laughs> so it's not going to be July 16th, but we are planning another one. So the way that it worked was I know you first brought up like, is it heated? Because yes, yes. it's. It it's was cold April that 1st, night, but it was great. It yeah. was awesome. So each level is heated right when you walked in and they host like weddings on this thing. So oh, like cool. they know what's up, like the whole undercarriage, whatever they call it, like the, the, what do you call it? Like the basement of the boat. Like, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like where the kitchen is and stuff. So you walk in and there were chafing dishes and, and, you know, food and drinks and whatever. Shout out to Newberg Brewing. They hooked us up with like 30 cases of beer. Crazy. You didn't have to drink Newberg, but most, mostly everyone did. And um, the second level was the same food and drinks. And then the third level was the DJ and the dance floor. And normally the whole back of the boat would be open. But since it was chilly out, they didn't they didn't have it open. But if you wanted to, you can walk out to the decks on the second and first floors uh -huh. to get photos of the bridges and the Statue of Liberty. It was cool. it was freaking what awesome. What about those northern lights? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so April 1st was this cruise, right? So I think Amanda might be watching. If not, she'll watch later. Amanda, I love you. Amanda and our. Uh, who last year we did, or two years ago, was it last year? We did a full, basically, hour recap <laughs> like of their week. wedding. It was like a, the Orange and Blue thing wedding recap. <laughs> it was like an after show for like The Bachelor or something. So It was a great episode. Go watch it. So, um, yeah. It, so, it was April 1st. We're talking in our group chat about uh, how excited we were about the boat party, right? And she sees this post on Instagram that for the first time in 44 years you'll be able to see the Northern lights from Manhattan and the entire, uh, lower, uh, not lower East side, but whatever the entire the like downtown yeah. will be turning black, dark. So we can for less light pollution. So you could see the Northern lights. So in our group chat, she goes, Oh my God, I'm so excited. This night's going to be amazing. I've waited my whole life for this basically. And it dawns on us. This is April fool's I day. Little, I was like, have you considered that it's April fool's day? It's probably not. I, I don't know, though, because I Googled it then, and it was, like, in the forecast. They were originally predicting for Wednesday, like, you could maybe see the Northern Lights. So, I don't know if it was real. I don't know. It wasn't about, real, because yeah. afterwards, like, we got you, basically. Yeah. So, uh, if you're watching live, there are a couple. Of these This couple was awesome. They're so cute. They danced the whole night. They're wearing their matching uh, Home Run Apple I sweaters. I that. Um, my buddy Keith Tara, Drea was busy. <laughs> so, my buddy Keith Tara came, who also does phenomenal photography work. Uh, shoots a lot of BMX stuff and weddings and things of that nature. So he popped on board and, and shot some photos for us. So I will be putting up this um, this photo album on Facebook, I guess, like this afternoon or tonight or whatever. So uh, me and Cabo Man on there. Love it. Uh, it was great. So some people decided like, hey, you know, we're not into the party atmosphere of the third deck. I'm right. going to stay in the second or the first, which is great. It's cool. Uh, you have a great mix of every, you know, of everyone and whatever you're into. There's our bowling team. <laughs> so. Uh, our bowling team is called We Thought This Was Kickball, <laughs> uh, even though it's a bowling team. And it was fun. So we, we had a great time. This girl's okay. T-shirt was awesome. I can't see it. It's a Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man is a Mets fan, right. if you haven't known. Uh -huh. And it's a photo of Spider-Man outside City Field. I don't know if it's like an Etsy thing oh, or if cool. someone actually makes that, but that was a great T-shirt. Awesome. So we had a great time. And uh, if you showed up, hopefully you did too. So the reason why I was asking about Katie's wedding again was because I want to do this again. Heck yeah, I want to go. But I think that what we should do is, I think you're getting a phone call. If that's important, you can take it. It might be, but I'll wait for a text. Go ahead. Yeah, we have to turn this thing off in a few that's minutes okay. anyway. So um, what I think we should do is plan it for a day when the Mets are away. Uh -huh. And then stream the game on TVs on every level. Right. Third level will still be the dance floor and the music because maybe not everyone is as locked into that specific game. Right. So third floor will still be like the rager. The second and the first floor will be the food, the bar, and TVs with sound That'll on. That'll be so fun. So it'll be a viewing party on the boat. Awesome. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because, I mean, we don't have Jacob DeGravin-Rack Scherzer right now tentatively. 
But like, if that was something you'd be able to arrange for like a postseason, like a way, like that would be insane. I'm just thinking of like a high stakes game, that kind of situation. That'd be crazy. And uh, checking in in the comments was the girl wearing that shirt. Oh, hello, Queen. Uh, her name is Carrie Ann. And she said it's Spider-Man shirt girl. <laughs> I think I know Carrie. Is this the Car Carrie Ann? Are you the Carrie Ann that I know? If not, this is awkward. But let me know. I couldn't wrote, see who it was. They sold them at the city uh, at City last season. So that's pretty cool. I, I wasn't sure. But I, I went up to her because I made like a little reels video. Uh -huh. Which uh, went up on Instagram, and not everyone likes that there's curses in it because it's the song I'm on a boat. Oh, please. And uh, anyway, so I went up to her and I'm like, I don't think I know you, but like, do you care if I like take a video <laughs> of your shirt? Like, is that weird? Right. She's like, no, I'll go for it. So sh I put that in the in the little video. My as favorite well. part of that video was I was reading the comments on the Facebook post, and like Lucho, who I'm sure is watching, he always does, and he's wonderful. Oh, it's his um, birthday yesterday. Yes, happy birthday, Lucho. Um, there was a, there was like a whole like section of him like saying like let's go Mets whatever Sorry, and on. then what the fuck is that? <laughs> he's trying to make the board say happy birthday. Wait a minute. All right, maybe that did play and I just can't hear it, uh, but I I didn't hear it either. All right, anyway, go but on. anyway, um, like he was featured in the video. It was so cool, and his only comment on the Facebook video was there was cake because there was like a two second shot of you cutting or someone cutting a cake. oh yeah, yeah, yeah there was the cake looked good the cake oh, i don't need it but oh, they yeah. made it, it this it boat with it wow. yeah the boat does everything the skyline princess is legit i'm Love telling it. you so uh we gotta Lucha, get back, happy birthday i did have the sound playing here and it didn't play i don't know what the hell's going on with my board there's our, our technical difficulty i'm very upset about it because you know i like to play fart sounds or happy birthday <laughs> yeah, buttons i'm distraught that the fart button isn't working yeah me too <laughs> um so anyway that's the story with that so stay tuned for that i think everyone i'm pretty sure i'm not gonna say everyone because i am gonna have to call somebody out here i don't know if you heard about this but someone stole sam's jacket i did see that what the hell is it possible that somebody thought it was theirs and just like grabbed it and like doesn't know who it is i thought so i wrote an email out to everyone that went on the boat and i didn't want to say like you stole but right. i was saying like i hope that someone accidentally walked away with this jacket no questions asked right. please mail it back to us and you know we don't know everyone on the boat i i sent an email out to right. our entire mailing list yeah so not to say that um you know, this isn't a safe atmosphere, but there's, unfortunately, there's thieves everywhere. People are people. Yeah. And I we were almost 100% positive it wasn't an accident because she had it underneath someone else's jacket. Mm. Someone probably saw her wearing it. was like, wow, that's cool. I want right. to keep it. So, unfortunately, she left without a jacket. Poor but Sam. um yeah poor sam we and we're never making them again so that's even worse the worst part about it so Stinks. uh that's the story with that but stay tuned i was 99.9 percent .9 of the people actually she wrote the next day to me i still had a great time you know unfortunately that happened but you she's know the best. she's sam, the best you're the best sam you're love the best you. so maybe we'll, unfortunately we'll have to do like a coat check next time which is so sad to say but like yeah maybe yeah, just make sure well it'll be july so maybe we won't be wearing a jacket um hope not. anyway so that's a story with that uh i do also want to i did have it here here we go add to stream so denver is sold out the Ooh. right away when the uh the lockout ended i put up denver i think the next yeah. day because we're running out of time that's in may or it's next month already yeah, I so know, may crazy. 21st is sold out um anaheim is also sold out which i'm surprised by because it's a little bit further away it's you in Cali. West Coast Mets fans who were Do like, you know how many there? people? Oh my God. <laughs> the internet is full of so many fucking weird people. Oh, I, I know that very well. Well, but uh, go on. Tinder swindler, whatever. Um, I wrote, come on out, DeGrom versus Syndergaard. <laughs> like, I can really predict the fucking <laughs> rotation. Everything you say on the internet is but literal, like, Darren. This is false Duh. advertising. Like, people are so mad. I'm like, yeah, no shit. It's a joke. So I wrote it again with, like, an asterisk. Like, uh, this is probably not going to happen, right. but whatever. It could. So anyway, that's also sold out. After that will be Philly. Even with my glasses, I can't read that. That says August 20th. We'll be going back to Philly Saturday night in Philly. And for the first time, we're getting hotels in Philly. Oh, fun. So we don't normally do that because we do promote the round-trip bus bus ride but right. let's say you want to make a weekend of it and um and hang out down there in the philly go to the, get some cookies or do whatever you want Which, to do by the way i know i said this last year try the insomnia cookie speakeasy in philly it is so cool i'm sorry continue. check that out also there is a casino next to the ballpark now so awesome. hit up that and then after that 
in September, we'll, we will be going to Oakland. So a lot of the Mets will be going back to their old bar, ball, ballpark because we got like their <laughs> whole team now. So we're going to Oakland at the end of September. So that's that's what we got going on for the rest of the season. So definitely uh, check that out. As far as um, the uh, the Anaheim hotels, we are not going to get a hotel block on that. Reason being is it's so close to Disney. A lot of places will work with us on hotel rates, but they want me to sign this crazy letter that says if they don't sell X amount of rooms, I'm going to pick up like 70, 70 percent of them on our dime. And I'm like, no, thanks. nah, I'm not paying for the rooms. Right. And the way that it works is we call the hotels. Mm-hmm. They give a special discounted rate. They put up the hotel link and people buy them. So like Denver sold 500 and something hotel rooms. Right. Nights. Right. So like they call it rooms, but it's like, let's say you want to stay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that counts for three for you. Right. 500 nights is what the hotel is doing in Denver. Crazy. If you can't use that as like proof of concept, yeah. I don't know what else is better than that. Right. So we're not doing one for Anaheim. I guess I'll email everyone about that soon. So mm-hmm. just like do whatever you want. Like some people want to spend a little bit extra bucks mm-hmm. and be super close to Disney. Right. Or you want to be close to the ballpark and spend a little bit less. It's totally up to you. But for Philly, first time ever, we will have a hotel block for that, which is really cool. So as far as tickets are concerned, besides that, we do have the um, double header up right now, which we've done a double header before. We did one this past season, but that wasn't scheduled um, to be a double header. This one right off the bat is a straight up double header, single admission double header. That we're is. back to nine innings, right? Nine innings, runner starting on second again, so I you know. won't be there all day. And uh, where is it? Tuesday, May 3rd versus Atlanta. I believe they're $44 a piece. You're getting two games for the price of one. Cool. It comes with the special, you know, T7LA 2022 jersey, which looks just like the jerseys Julia and I are wearing as members of the Seven Line uh, Army. Really nice, by the way. So she, this is, she just got hers today. I so just put it on right before I got here. Head on over to Mets.com right. slash the Seven Line Army and get involved in that. I think there's like 80 tickets left out of our like 900. So that's going to be really fun. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got to promote as far as like the seven lines concerned. Woo-hoo. What else we got to talk about? Um, you got a dog. I got a dog. Bristol. So cute. Bristol. We love her. She doesn't leave my side. Yeah. I like it. It's cool that she loves me so much, mm-hmm. but it's weird. Like I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like weird to say. I don't want to like be naked in front of a dog ever. <laughs> I feel like, is that weird? Oh, to, like, you're such a new dog. Owner. It's weird. Like I, she doesn't, she does leave me alone when I'm in the bathroom. She doesn't like try to follow me in. Right. She doesn't push on the door. She doesn't scratch. Like if I'm in the shower or on the toilet, mm-hmm. I'll come out and she's sitting on the bed, like waiting for me. Good girl. But she doesn't leave me alone, you're which is alpha. cool. It's cool. But like, it's, it's a little too much. How'd she do while you guys were away? Was she okay? Yeah. She was Amazing. Fine. Love it. She was fine. Love it. She loves us, but it's just a little much. Maybe she'll grow out of it. She's not even one years old yet, but she's great. I know. So, she's a little skittish girl. She's cool. Awesome. So we'll keep her. Um, yeah. So anyway, guys, we'll be back. Are we doing this every Tuesday now? What's the deal with you? Tuesday, What's your story? Definitely next week. Tuesday's good. So okay. I think Tuesday's got to keep will the people be, on a schedule. Here. I know. I think we're going to do Tuesdays this year. I think that will work for my work schedule. Ideally, Tuesday. Okay. I think we're okay. Tuesdays. We'll aim for a little earlier in the afternoon if that's better. For yeah. I got to ride the dirt bike. Yeah. I was supposed to race this weekend. Now it's going to rain. Sorry. So we'll see what's up. Doppler Darren's not happy. I've been checking the Doppler for <laughs> New England because I'm supposed to go up to New Hampshire this weekend. Yeah since last week and i'm like it'll change it'll change it'll change and now it's just not changing yeah. so the storm that's going through dc i guess by the time because it's not supposed to what is it supposed to rain here on this weekend no it's not yeah. so the rain that's going through dc i guess is going to be up towards new england by the weekend uh-huh. and that's going to screw up both opening day and my race Fun. so yeah cool something to look forward to <laughs> all right guys so share the show to be in, in the running for this these two game used uh, balls from the amazing memorabilia location at city field. We appreciate them. Uh, also project repat.com 30% off code is seven line. The, the number seven L I N E 2020. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the number seven L I N E 22 gives you 30% off on project repat.com. Thank you guys for checking in. We appreciate all the love, all the shares, all the listens, all the downloads. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're on You know, if you're listening as a podcast, if you're on YouTube, hit that little button as well. And we'll see you guys next week. I'd hit a button here that says put in the books. I don't don't know if our remix is going to work. It works. A miracle. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye. Why did it work? Actually, let's see if this works. Don't do it. Don't do it.
the happy birthday doesn't work. Okay, I thought you were going to do the fart button. That's no, funny. not the fart. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Bye. Plus, there's a huge Mets contingent. There they are.